Hey, what's up everyone? Jason Truly here, back with more Pico CTF. We're grinding through all of the general skills section categories from Pico CTF 2023, so their most recent event. In the past video, we solved Chrono in Moneyware, so be sure to check that out. And today, we'll be looking at the Permissions Challenge. So opening up here, you see I've already started the instance. The tags read, that it's general skills and something about Vim, which if you're not familiar, Vim is a text editor that's usually built in by default on Linux systems. It's my text editor of choice. I actually have a video and I'll leave a link in the description below in a card on just five quick, neat Vim tips and tricks that you can do. It gained some attraction and it has a decent amount of views and it was one of my favorite videos to make. Let me know in the comments your favorite text editor and why it's Vim. So reading the description, it's, can you read files in the root file? The system admin has provisioned an account. Okay, so it gives us this SSH command. So secure shell, remotely log in to this port as this user, Pico player, on this uh, host name, SaturnPicoCTF.net. And it even gives us a nice secure password. And that's something I kind of like about PicoCTF. Since they are a beginner friendly um, environment, right? They know novices, beginners are gonna flock to this and they're gonna use this. So it's good to kind of get them in the mindset of what a secure password is. Cause you can notice this password is just a bunch of random letters and exclamation points and characters and punctuation like that. It's not password one, it's not ABC one, two, three. It is an actual secure complex password you could probably make it a bit longer. I believe this is two, four, six, eight, ten characters. So pretty good, right? It's longer than five characters, and it's not going to be something that's in a word list like Rock You or Fast Track or Fast Crack. So I like that. Shout out to Pico CTF for kind of getting you in that mindset from the get-go. All right, enough of that tangent, enough of that rant. So if we reread this description. We want to somehow read files in slash root. So I do an ls of slash. Let me make that a long listing. And we can see here, there's the root folder, which is owned by the root user of the machine. They're like that super user, the admin, the god user. They can do pretty much anything they want on the system. However, I don't have access to that. Only the root user has access. They have read, write, and execute permission. Everyone else denoted by these blanks they can't look at it, they can't touch it, they can't edit it, they can't make any changes. Only that user can do it, or users who have permission. So you can see my user ID is Pico player, and I'm only in the Pico player group. So I can only access things um, that have my group ID on them, my, my group entity, or if they're just open to everyone. So if I try to do a listing of slash root, I'm gonna get permission denied. If I try to create some type of thing, echo high, and then save that in root high.txt, I get permission denied. So I want some type of way to escalate my privileges to become the root user. And we can look at Vim because that was in the that was in the hint, right? So if I do which can't type, if I do which Vim, I get user sbin vim if i do a long listing on that to check out the permissions okay oh it's owned by root right not exactly this is a symbolic link which means it points to an alternate file location on the system so i just keep doing an ls tech l on these other files okay another symbolic link ls tech l on this all right there's no more arrows there's no more links so when i run vim this is the command that i'm running and we can see the permissions here. I have read and execute permissions and I can open up the Vim or I could open up VI, either one. And it's just my basic text editor. I can type, I can do whatever, I can save. But a neat trick is if you do exclamation point, you can see my lower left hand thing, the left corner, uh, colon exclamation point, you can run commands. So I can run PWD to print the working directory and it prints the directory I'm in. I can also just do colon bin sh or bin bash. And now I have a shell. I'm not root. You can see the dollar sign. 
that denotes your non root user by default. And okay, I can do ls, I can cat etsy password. But I'm still not the root user. Exit out of this, I go back to my Vim session. So how can I escalate privileges, right? Can I do find all files, the type F files that have the permission where the set user ID bit is enabled, meaning I can run these commands as root. So by default, if you run this enough, um, you see these things and you can plug this into like GTFO bins, which is a great privilege escalation website tool. None of these are gonna help us. We see sudo kind of run commands as sudo, sudo switch user, enter the password for my guy. I can grab that. Slam in the password. Sorry, user Pico player is not allowed to execute switch user as root on challenge. So I can't just switch users to the root user and I don't have the root user's password. So I'm out of luck here. What if I do sudo tech L list all the things that I can run as sudo. I can't run SU. I can't run a lot of commands perhaps, but maybe there's some that I can run. So it prints out some default entries, but down here, ooh, look at this. The user Pico player can run the following commands on challenge, which is just the host name right here. That's the box I'm on. It's called challenge. If I do host name, right? So user bin VI, which is the pre predates Vim. It's the like bare bones version of Vim, if you will. I can run all commands. So basically, I can become, not run all commands, forgive me. I can run this as the root user. So if I do sudo user bin vi, and now I do that trick from before with an ID, look, I'm the root user. I'm no longer the Pico player, but now I've escalated the root. So that's cool. So now I can do bin sh, and you see my prompt changed. It was a dollar sign but now it's a pound symbol, an octothorpe. That's just a neat little trick, a bit of syntax to denote that I'm the root user. So I can do print working directory. I'm still in the Pico player directory. So let's go to root and let's look at everything that they have. Look, I have dot flag dot text. The, the dot in front of it denotes that it's hidden. It's kind of a software bug. I also have like a short on that. I'll leave a link if I can. I'll leave a link in the description. So if I do a regular LS, it won't show anything. So I need to add the tech A to print the hidden files. So there we have it. I can cat this out. And we get our flag, Pico CTF using Vim Editor. So that's one of the reasons why I really like Vim. I talked about the GTFO bins earlier. So if we knew that we could run Vim as sudo, but we didn't know about that neat trick, what could we have done? We would have gone to GTFO bins, hit enter, click on the first link that pops up, and then type in VI. We see here for VI, I think that's just short for visual, and then Vim is visual improved because it's the improved version. And we get some neat tricks, right? So we can run these other commands. Let's let's play around while we still have access to this. So we saw this trick, right? The colon exclamation point bin sh. But we can also just directly read a file. So we know that it's in um not vi. We have to use vim. Ooh, did I get logged out at the server? Yeah, my connection closed. Oh, so once I solved the challenge, it automatically killed my instance. Oh, well, we could log back in, relaunch the instance, but there you have it. There's GTFO bins, a super, super helpful, useful resource, <laughs> a super helpful resource, geez, for privilege escalation on Linux and Unix type machines. So there you have it. Let me know in the comments below how you guys solve this challenge, what your favorite text editor is. I personally like them. I'll leave a link to my five tips and tricks in Vim if you're interested. 
As always, take it easy and see you guys in the next video.